Now, <laughs> just January 20th, what do you guys got going on? Um, I I've got nothing. I'm trying to get a few speakers lined up. Hmm, uh, speakers for... Uh, would, would you be willing to do something on Mothman? Yeah. Something like that? Mm -hmm. About 20, 25 minutes. So it's going to be Grave City Haunted Relic Expo. Hmm. So we're, we're pretty much going to be focusing on, like, haunted items. Hmm. But I want to get some speakers coming in to kind of break up, break it yeah. up a little bit. Variety? So this, this would be idea. ideal. Okay. Is it, and it's here? It'll be here. Okay. Yep, that's really cool. That's really nice yeah, of you. Man. It'll be fun. On January 20th, 2018, I went to the Sanford Community Center in Moundsville, West Virginia to an attendant event called the Grave City Haunted Relic Expo. I had been invited to do a 20 to 25 minute presentation about my favorite thing, the Mothman legend of Point Pleasant. It was my first public speaking arrangement. I put together a speech marked down on cue cards and performed it on stage. When I first walked into the gym area, the vendor tables were setting up. The crowd gathered around metal chairs facing towards the stage. We took our seats and prepared to listen to the speakers. The first speaker was Dave Spinks. He spoke generally about paranormal subject matter and his experience investigating, focusing mainly on hairy human-like monsters. Ironically, when he went to a Q&A segment, someone asked him about Mothman. The next speakers were a team that researched reports of hairy humanoids. They called themselves the Southeastern Ohio Society for Bigfoot Investigation. They displayed plaster casts and maps as they spoke on that topic. Then a speaker representing the Mountain State Paranormal Team did his presentation. The main subject of his talk was his time investigating houses that are reported to be haunted. His speech had the most humor among the speakers, and consisted primarily of a Q&A section. Then was my turn to speak. I stood up from the crowd and approached the stage. I focused my speech on telling as much of the Mothman story that I could within a time limit, to an audience that might not be familiar with the details. I tried to emphasize the importance of West Virginia folklore in the telling of these stories. The Mothman legend is a valuable story to know, especially if you're from West Virginia. It has affected our culture and become a recognizable legend worldwide. The speech mainly covered the basics of the Scarberry Mallet sighting, the Marcella Bennett sighting, and the Connie Carpenter sighting as well as information about John Keel, Mary Heyer, UFOs, the Men in Black, the Silver Bridge Collapse, and modern Mothman reports and events. One thing to make the speech stand out was the inclusion of the Scarberry stories of poltergeist activity and the Mothman on their roof. I wanted to tell those stories because it's an example of monster and spirit reports coming from the same witnesses, and because they're stories that are not often told. The Scarberry's ordeal did not end after they reported to encounter the Mothman on November 15, 1966. Linda suffered terrible nightmares and anxiety. Roger and her father even took her to the hospital because of it. Strange occurrences began happening at the Scarberry's home over the following weeks. They reportedly heard odd sounds and beeping, as well as loud garbled noises they described as being similar to that of a sped-up phonograph record. The couple later relocated, but the activity seemed to follow them. Strange lights are said to have appeared in the house, objects were reportedly moved by themselves, and the heavy odor of cigar smoke was frequently noted, even though no one in the home smoked. These peculiar experiences are similar to reports of poltergeist activity or hauntings. One night about midnight, Linda, her aunt, and five-month-old infant daughter were all sleeping in her bedroom. Linda awoke and distinctly saw the shadowy form of a man in the room. The kitchen light had been left on and dimly flowed into the room enough to see. Linda said the man wore a black and white checkered shirt and black pants. He had cold black crew-cut hair and dark unblinking eyes. He just stood there, staring at her. Linda said she was numb and couldn't move. He then took a cigarette out of his shirt pocket and lit it. There was a gold crucifix which Linda had hanging above her daughter's bed. When the strange man lit the cigarette, the crucifix reflected the light and caught his eye. He turned to look at it, as did Linda. When she turned back, he was gone. Linda claimed that her aunt later woke up and said she dreamed the exact same events that happened in the room. The house was searched. All the doors were still locked. There was no sign of an intruder. The reports of poltergeist activity fit well with the Haunted Expo setting. The major reoccurring theme throughout the speech was the human element of these stories, and the idea that the entirety of the paranormal, including monsters, spirits, and UFOs, 
are all related or connected and should be studied as folklore and as a part of the human experience. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. I'm going to have to keep this to a whisper. There's a speaker right now. He goes by uh, the Mothman Chaser, something like that. And uh, he's a very soft-spoken individual, so let's just take a look here. A lot of people here got a good turnout. There's Mr. Humble. Uh, he's been telling people to be quiet so you can hear the speakers. And uh, people have been less than cooperative. There goes uh, there goes Dave. He's he's leaving the leaving the building. After I did my presentation, the floor was open to the vendors. We went around looking at the different sellers and talking with some of the people who attended the event. Some asked me questions like how long I've been involved in this or how I got started. Some gave me advice on public speaking, which I of course hope to get better at. And many complimented me on the presentation. I talked to speaker Dave Spinks, who I'd also seen at the 2017 Mothman Festival. I bought his DVD, which he signed, To Mothman Historian. Even though it was a haunted relic expo at a school that is said to be haunted, Nothing too creepy happened, except when we went to the Paranormal Museum. I asked one of the people I was with what time it was, but his watch had stopped sometime during our look around the museum. I of course found this to be an entertaining coincidence. The only problem with the event was that the microphone was very low and the room was very loud, meaning it was often difficult to hear the speakers unless they were yelling. You had to pay attention a lot more and try to drown out the background noise. The back-to-back -back presentations also left for very little time to check out the vendors, but the time we spent there was fun, and I got to talk to some interesting people. The final presentation was the event organizers themselves, Paranormal Quest. Steve and Ryan went on stage. They showed the crowd various objects which are said to be haunted. This included historical items like the cat from the electric chair of the former West Virginia State Penitentiary. They talked about their experiences making their YouTube show and answered audience questions. The first time we had Bigfoot featured, Mothman featured, and um, the Paranormal field was very to the amazing, amazing adventure. And the one thing that's led me into is uh, collecting hunter artifacts. Um, the accounts are these people are private residents in Columbus, Ohio. And um, the reports are this lady's um, husband purchased a box of antiques from the antique shop. Classic set. So they hung it up on the wall in their house. And it's been notorious for being flung off the wall. So it's safe to say that's probably why uh, the image of Jesus is actually broke off the front of it, because it has been flung off that wall. And at one particular time, the lady walked into the room that the cross was hanging on, and it was literally turned upside down. So that's pretty much the just of the history of, of that item. Um, this item here was found again at a private residence of the Columbus, Ohio. Um, the reports are. This young couple moved into a house, and um, it was found in the basement in storage. <clears throat> Ever since then, the feeling of being watched, love and overall feeling was felt, and faint humming and faint singing uh, was reported. Interesting enough, which you brought in yesterday, and I first held it in my hands, without her even telling me that story, without even giving any accounts before I wrote it down so I can have it and I do my readouts for the display. In my, in my mind, not physically, in my mind, I swear I could hear tribal drums. It was really, really interesting. All right, next item we'll go over is probably my most haunted item. It is connected to nine deaths. It is the... It is from the former West Virginia State Penitentiary. I found it on a private auction. It's the actual cat told spark in the electric chair. So think of this. This sat on top of nine individuals while they had, at the most, three charges of electricity ranging anywhere from 1,400 to 1,700 volts running through the cat, through the wet sponge, through the brain, through their heart, and out one of their legs. I think there's no real way to know exactly who you're communicating with, but I think the way in which you go about investigating also helps to understand what exactly you are setting out to investigate. I think having a very historical approach, having a very pointed approach, uh, definitely helps. Like the house of progressive, we get. 
research on that name. We'll go back to that mountain. We'll get a different name. So we'll go back. To this we'll, house. Go, we'll get a different name. It could be female. It could be male. I mean, it's very confusing on who you're communicating with. We don't know. I mean, I wish we would know. Document everything, and that's really all we can do. Um, thoughts on monsters and UFOs? I think it would be very um, egotistical for mankind to think we were the only thing in existence, any creatures of our type of uh, capabilities. You know, I think UFOs, you mentioned that. Yeah. I think it's very possible. It would be interesting to me to say, oh, no, absolutely not. Because I've had a few things I've seen in the sky. I can't explain. Now, I haven't gone squatching yet. I want to go squatching. That is on my bucket list. Um, that's, I'm open to that. All right. So, Steve said one last question. I'll answer your question. I'll kind of bridge that into the final point that I always like to make whenever I uh, speak to people in general. So, I would say it's, like Steve said, anything is very possible. We all have a passion for the paranormal. Passion for the paranormal is not necessarily ghosts, it's not necessarily monsters, it's not necessarily these legends. I think the passion for the paranormal comes in with bridging the gap between science and these unexplained legends, mysteries, monsters, ghosts, however you would explain. So, for me, I think since I believe in ghosts, and I think believing in ghosts is just as probable as believing in these monsters. Because like Steve said, there's many parts of the world and the universe that we have yet to explore. So, because I think the word monster has come about for something that we as mankind don't understand, we don't, we don't know about it, therefore we fear it. Because as mankind, we fear the unknown. So we all have a passion for bridging the gap between the unknown and science, and I think that's why us coming together and speaking in these conventions is very beneficial, uh, because we can only work together to try and achieve that goal. And uh, we all have a passion for what we do, and I think doing what we do with a passion very important thing. So of course everybody, uh, when you leave here tonight, we're all going to go back and continue our research, continue our studies, uh, continue what we are passionate about as long as we do it uh, with a passion and with love and we're honest about what we do, there's nothing that we can do wrong. So thank you very much. After they spoke, I went up to Ryan at the vendor table. I'd met Steve before but never gotten the opportunity to talk to Ryan. I told them that I enjoyed their work and that I would seen all their videos. I said that I also liked the live streams they did, specifically mentioning the one from the former West Virginia State Penitentiary, where Ryan willingly got handcuffed to an old abandoned prison cell as he waited for any kind of anomalous phenomenon to occur around him. I suggested that if they ever did a Mothman episode, they should investigate the TNT area, and that I'd like to do an interview for their show. Uh, if you ever going to do a video on your channel about Mothman? You know, we have talked about it uh, because we we absolutely love the Point Pleasant area. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, we've been down there actually, and we got to see the Silver Bridge where it was when it collapsed. Uh, and we had talked about going down there and doing an episode of Paranormal Quest uh -huh. that was related to Mothman, and then do a separate episode relating to the history and the ghosts of Point Pleasant because there's yeah. a lot of stuff down there. Absolutely, we had always talked about it. It's just a matter of you know getting the right permissions, mm -hmm. people letting us come in to film in those certain areas. Yeah, so. I talked to Steve about the TNT area. If he would ever want to do a video investigating down there, because it's a like a place where a lot of stuff happens. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's UFO sightings and all the Mothman sightings, or most of the Mothman sightings happen there, and people have uh, experiences there, like haunted and stuff. Uh, I was thinking you guys could go check out the teens here and do filming stuff. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. I've done videos there just looking around, but I would love to see uh, Paranormal Quest go down there and investigate. Really That'd cool. be sweet. I gotta tell. Hey Steve. Yeah, yeah I was talking. About. We're talking man, we gotta go out and do uh, the TNT area. Yes. Yeah, I was talking about. If you guys ever need me to come and tell about Mothman while you're hanging out the TNT area. That'd you know? be sweet. Yeah, we always look for people to do interviews. So, yeah. you know, and you obviously, from everything that I heard that you were talking about, you have a lot of knowledge on Mothman. And of course, yeah. if, you know, when, whenever that happens, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll definitely get in contact with you. I follow you guys on Twitter. 
And uh, I gave a shout out to your channel as well. I tweeted out your YouTube channel so that people will watch it. Oh, nice. Thanks, man. Really cool. So if you guys ever need uh, help with interviews or going anywhere, Point Pleasant, Mothman, that's cool. But I, I do like uh, the spirit stuff you guys do as well. So if you could ever go on investigation with you guys, that'd also be cool. Awesome. There's like... I recommended to him that they expand their studies to explore other incredible subjects of modern mythology, such as monsters and UFOs. He said that they'd had serious conversations about it, but they were unsure if they had the budget to do that kind of work. I said that it's not really that different. The UFO fans also use kinds of EMF detectors and night vision. I explained that John Keel viewed UFOs as basically large environmental light anomalies. Much like the light anomalies that spirit investigators are said to experience in supposedly haunted houses, except much larger and in the night sky. He seemed to find this unique, and appeared interested by the idea of these things being comprised of energy. He said that it would definitely set them apart as different. I recommended the works of John Keel and Jacques Vallée. I think Paranormal Quest can be an entertaining show regardless of your personal frame of reference. I appreciate that an online video project like theirs was being done in West Virginia, and it was so independently made. With the use of the internet, we make our own entertainment these days. People will always continue to occupy their time, hanging out in creepy old buildings in the pitch black darkness, and it remains to me an intriguing pastime. Ryan said that they would definitely go to the TNT area, and that it's not a matter of if, but when. The haunted expo began slowing down to a halt as the room emptied. We exited Grave City, disappearing into the night. Thank you.